Wow, what a night. <laughs> I think we saved America last night. I really do. I think that the future of our country was at stake, whether we go down the path to some ossified European socialist system with no initiative and no spark and no creativity, or whether we remain what the United States of America has traditionally been and can be and will be again. I think, and I've been saying this for quite a while, that Donald Trump will make a great president. I expect a presidency uh, at least as good as Eisenhower's and perhaps as good as Reagan's. It's a pretty good range to be in. We finally elected someone who is experienced at being a CEO, someone who has a record of achievement outside of politics. And I think that distinction is going to become quite evident as this process unfolds. But let's look back and discuss how Trump won. <clears throat> the first and the most important point is that it was not a negative campaign. This was not a rejection of Hillary Clinton. Initially, that's how people came to the party. But then as people got to know Donald Trump and got to really listen to his message, this became more and more of a positive pro-Trump campaign. And the way we know that is that the Comey announcement that they were reopening the investigation uh, followed a week of Trump gains. Had Trump limped into that announcement five, six, seven, eight points behind and then struggled to uh, peek above the surface based on Comey's statement, uh, that would have indicated a negative victory. And then it probably would have been knocked into a cocked hat uh, a week later when Comey withdrew everything and said, oops, sorry, made a mistake. Uh, this was not a verdict on Hillary's emails. It was not a verdict on Benghazi. It was not a verdict on the Clinton Foundation or the pay for play. It was a verdict on Donald Trump and a verdict that was sustained in the face of the most negative series of attacks any politician have ever, has ever had to endure. Uh, Hillary's campaign was 100% negative, maybe 95% negative, a constant, continuous battering of Donald Trump, and yet he held up under it, and the positive change he wanted to bring resonated so deeply that voters did not let themselves be distracted by this campaign. So Trump had started to gain in the last two and a half weeks. He'd started to stay on message articulate his themes and his ideas clearly and clear away the distractions of the various accusers that made accusations against him. And then he started to gain. In the ABC poll, he was 12 points back on Monday. And uh, then by Friday, a week ago, uh, he had pulled uh, almost even. And then Comey dropped his bombshell. And it didn't affect the numbers much. They remained more or less the same throughout the week and into the weekend. And you know what? They were right. <laughs> the uh, polls weren't that wrong. Uh, the polls that predicted a tie at the moment are correct. Uh, it's possible that as more votes come in from the West Coast, Hillary might actually add to her lead. And it might, in fact, be true that Clinton won by one point in the popular vote. But in the Electoral College and where the battles occurred, in the battleground states, Trump won decisively. And his victory is a tribute to his campaign and to his message and to the frustration and the desire for change uh, people felt throughout the country. This was not an election. This was a peaceful revolution. This was a, the peaceful overthrow of not just a dynasty, but a regime, the ancien regime, as they used to say in France, of lobbyists and special interests and, uh, and deficit spenders and entitlement dependents and the whole and mediocrity and regulation and subservience to the global economy and passivity in the face of massive illegal immigration and the fundamental transforming and opposition to the fundamental transformation of America into a socialist system. That's what animated this election. That's what caused this surge of voters. Uh, demographically, uh, it was characterized by high school educated white men and women coming out to vote. That much we know right now. And by very large margins, the exit poll uh, showed that white high school men uh, voted for Trump 
by 67 to 20. Whew, three and a half to one. And they also showed, if you've been tracking my videos, you know that that momentum built over the last three weeks. Uh, three weeks ago, the Fox News poll, which accurately predicted this trend, uh, showed only a 16-point lead among that demographic, and they ended up with a 47-point lead. And that shows the dramatic nature of how this message gripped people and moved people. Now, it's also possible, and we don't know this yet, that there was fundamental changes in the African-American vote. Uh, it's my suspicion, as Eileen and I predicted in uh, Armageddon, how Trump can beat Hillary, that there would be a fissure in the black community and that perhaps Southern blacks might stay loyal straight down the line, but that Northern industrial area Rust Belt blacks uh, may be finally voting their economic self-interest uh, not their uh, racial identity. And uh, we need to look at some exit polling to see if that was the case. But this transformation, this peaceful revolution, will not simply result in a change of the executive leadership. It will result in a fundamental alteration of American policies. One of the nice things about Barack Obama's style of governance is it won't take long to repeal everything he's done. Uh, nothing was ratified by Congress, and nothing, therefore, has the force of law. Uh, and so once this president walks out the door, every one of these executive orders, the Iran Treaty, uh, all, of the, uh, all of the steps to legalize everybody who's here illegal, all of those go out the window right away. Uh, Trump can repeal them with the stroke of the pen. Pen might run out of ink after a while, but we'll get him new ones. And uh, seriously, the whole Obama legacy can be washed away. And the one thing that was, two things that were legislatively accomplished, the uh, Obamacare bill, well, that's falling apart of its own accord. If we hadn't won, it would have to be replaced, repealed and replaced. And the Dodd-Frank bill, which everybody concedes has been ineffective on the one hand and, econ and an economic disaster on the other. That'll take legislative leadership. But we now control both houses and the White House. And if you thought there was gridlock before, there won't be much gridlock now. So there is every potential now for dramatic, effective, and really wholesale change. You know, when John Keats died, uh, before his death, he wrote an epitaph for himself. He was depressed and he felt that nothing would be remembered of his work. And he said, here lies one whose name is writ in water. You know, next tide it's wiped out. Well, Obama's legacy is writ in water. And we're about to see it change dramatically as a result of the first acts of the Trump revolution. Thanks for watching. Thanks for following this campaign with me and thanking, thank you for being peaceful soldiers in the Trump revolution.